Hey guys, welcome back. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to make a particle system in Houdini. And if you're a bit intimidated by Houdini, then fear not, because I'm going to show you how to make some quick and easy particles. So if you're ready, then I'm ready. So let's just jump in to Houdini. Okay, so if you have never been in Houdini before, the first thing you need to know is that you control the viewport the same way as you do in cinema. And I have set it up so we have our parameters up here, our nodes here, and our viewport here. Okay, so first of all, we need to press tab and we need to create a geo node. And let's just call this particles. And let's go inside. So inside of this particles geometry node, we are going to make a grid. And on this grid, we'll search for a scatter and we'll plug in the grid to the scatter. And then I'll preview the scatter node. And before I do anything else, I'll just go and make a null and I'll just put it here at the end and I'll call it out. And let's just link it up here, put it down here. Then we can preview this. So every node we put in between our start node and our out node will be previewed in our viewport. So now that we had this grid here, I'm actually just gonna go to my grid and resize it to like four. Yeah, that should be good. Then we need to make a pop network. And we'll just put it in here. All right. So let's jump into our pop network by double clicking. And inside of our pop network, we have a pop object, and then we have a pop source, and we have a merge. So what we need to start with is go to our pop network. And we actually want to bring in our geometry, because as you can see, nothing is in the viewport right now. So there's an easy way to do that. You'll just go and we need to type in this little code here. OP input path. And then we need to do this. Okay, so if you don't want to write this code in, I'll just have it in the description down below so you can just copy it. And what this says is that we are taking the input path of our input zero here. So if we go out by out to our particle skin, we can see this is our input zero. And input zero is actually our input one. So input two would be one, and input three would be two, and input four would be so. It just grabs this scatter here and puts it into our pop network. And what we need to do now is also go over here to our pop source. And we need to look at the emission type and the geometry source. So before I can show you the emission type, we need to move our points. And the way we do that is we go here and we create a pop force. And this is just the basic, basic thing you can create. So we'll just link up our pop force to our merge. And you can also just link it in here. But right now, it really doesn't matter. So let's just go back. It's just easier to see here. Here in our pop force, we need to crank up the amplitude to 1. Oh, that was 10. We need to crank up the amplitude to 1. And the amplitude is our strength in this instance. Then our swirl size is how big of a noise we have. And swirl scale is the same, but it's just split up into the coordinates, x, y, z. But for now, we just need to look at what we have created. So if I play it, you can see it moves really fast. And that's because we're not moving in real time. So to view this in real time, we can go down here, click on this real time toggle. And we'll just go back and now we can view it in real time. So if we go back in here to our pop source, you can see 
scatter onto surface just takes our points from our surface, which in this instance is our grid here, and it just takes them and uses these points. But what if you want them to emit on each frame? Well, we can do that by going up here, pressing all points, and now we're just emitting points on each frame from our original. And let's say you want it to stop so it don't generate a lot of points. There's an easy way to do that. You go into the birth tab under the pop source, and you hold down Alt, and then you click on the label. And that will create a keyframe down here. So then we can go to another spot. We can set this to zero, so we don't emit anything, and we can keyframe it again. So if you press the middle mouse button down here, you can move your keyframe. And let's just put it like this. All right. So let's just see. So now we're stopping the emission on frame 12. Okay, so now you know the basics of the pop source. And if we just play it again, you can see it really doesn't look great. So there's a reason for that. We'll go over to our pop force and this is just set to the standard settings. And I think we should turn up the swirl size and let's just play it again. You can see it gets a little bit bigger and we get loads more particles that are spread out in the noise. And if we wanted this to be a little bit more turbulent, we could turn up the turbulent scale. And you can see you get a little bit more fuzziness, not that much structure in it. We can also go back and turn down the turbulent scale. And you can see that it's not that turbulent and it follows the noise more strictly. It still looks a bit boring. So let me just set it back to free. And you can see that it's still a bit boring. So how do we make this more interesting? Well, let's first of all just cut this off. And you can cut by holding down Y. And then you can drag and cut. So let's cut this. And then we'll go and search for a pop up. Okay, so a pop up is a point operator velocity operator. All right, so now it gets fancy. So let's plug this in. And now we need to dive into our pop verb. And then we get these two nodes. So what we have here is the geometry. And then we have our velocity. We have our force. We have our edge. And color, UV, normals. We have everything that our object contains. And then we have some outputs. Let's just go press tab and search for a kernel noise. And we'll just put it in here. So what we want to do now is plug in our geometry here to our position here. And our geometry is our points out here. And then we want them to be curled up by the kernel noise. And then we want to output the kernel noise to a velocity. And the velocity just tells our points to go in a direction. And the direction that will go in is chosen by our kernel noise. So if we go a step out again to our popnet up here and let's play it, you can see we get this weird, weird curly thing. And it doesn't look that great right now because we need to go into our pop up again and we need to turn off the scale of our noise. And the scale of our noise is determined by our frequency. So if we turn down our frequency to like 0.5, the noise will get bigger. If we turn it up, it'll get smaller. So as you can see, we have a bigger noise. We can go into our puff up again. And let's just turn it down to 0.3. Like this. And you can see we have a Big, big curl noise. All right. But it's moving a bit slow. So what we can do is turn up the amplitude to like four. And then we'll move a bit quicker. 
And we already have something that looks really nice. But one thing I don't like is that our points are moving in a linear fashion. So they are almost trailing behind each other and they are too even. So a way to fix that is actually just by going out again to our pop network and then we can take our pop force and we can put it after our VOP node. So let's go into our pop force. Let's first of all see what happens. So you can see nothing is really happening here. It's only starting to break up when we get a little bit further out. And I think that's because our swirl size is a bit big. So let's just pull it down. And yeah, you can see it breaks up now, but we want it to break up even faster. So let's put our amplitude to four and let's see if it breaks up. Yeah, it's a bit more random. We can also go and turn up the turbulence to like 10. And as you can see, it looks so much more random. So let's turn down our amplitude again. So nothing is moving that fast around. Let me just turn off my grid so we can see what's actually happening. So we have a lot of points that are swimming around in this noise field, in this curl noise field, and they're really dynamic. Some are moving fast, some are clumping together, and they are all moving in this curl noise grid. But let's say we wanted to make these clump up instead and not have them to be this random. Well, we can just do that by going up to our pop force here. We can put the advection to zero, so it's not going to affect anything. And let's then go and create a pop flock. So this pop flock, we can actually just see what it does by pulling it in here. And then we're going to cut off the other ones. And let's just move them over here for now. So let's go into our pop flock and let's just see what happens when we play and you can see it looks a bit weird right now but let's go and dissect this node so the node has a number of centers and this flock node will create these points that are attracting around certain centers so what that in practice means is that some of these points are clumping up in certain areas of your sim. And right now we only have one center point. So if I create two center points, let's go and do that for three center points. You can see that all of our points are going to flug around three different center points. And just like that, you can see that we have three different center points. So when we have a lot of sensor points, it also gets a bit heavy. So keep that in mind. But for now, I want to do like 25 sensors and these controls down here actually link together. So the central attraction is actually just how much sensors should attract the particles. And this is just a minimum and a maximum. So the peak distance and the maximum distance they can be drawn to this sensor that's created. And then we have the interaction force. So they have a avoid force. And this avoid force just means that the particles are not going to hit each other. And we have a strength of that. And we also have a max distance. And we have a velocity. So that means how fast are they going to avoid each other. And we also have a max distance for that. So let's go and put the void force to one. And let me just go and see what happens. So you can see now we're creating a lot of centers. As you can see here. And the particles are not avoiding each other as much as they did before. So you can see if we turn it up to 10 again. And we play it from the start. You can see they are all trying to avoid each other and they are trying to avoid each other by a strength of 10. So that's a bit much. 
So let's put it down to one again. Let's go back. And the max distance, I'll just half that to 0 0.05. And let's just see what happens. So now we have these sensors and these sensors are going to be more populated because our void distance is lower. So the central attraction, I think we need to put that to 0.3. So it doesn't attract that much. So now I actually want to put these two nodes into the system again. So let's just do that like this. So our flock node is coming after our pop up. Okay, let's see what happens. So as you can see, we have a lot of points here and they're still moving in this stream because we turned off our pop force. But now they should be attracted to 25 centers. All right, so I've just previewed a bit here so you can see what's happening. And when we get out to like the last frames of this sim, so we're starting to really attract points up here to the center here. And we also have some different centers. So it's not that linear anymore. Things are gathering together and you can especially see it up here where things are gathering together here. And it just makes the particles a lot more dynamic when they're trying to stick together. So if we took this pop force into the mix again by turning up the advection strength and we might also need to turn up the pop flock again to 0.6 in the attraction. And let me just preview that so you can see what's happening. So now you can see we don't have these lines anymore, but we have a lot of randomness going on. And we also have some flocking going on. So we have a flock down here and we have a clump of particles going up here and we have a lot in the middle and these three nodes together have created this really intricate little particle system and if we think oh it's too random and we want it less random then we can just turn down the turbulence again but i think i'll just turn down the amplitude so the strength is turned down and this system is really, really versatile in making these really nice pop setups. You can always go and add more nodes to this, but this is what I usually start with when I'm trying to make this kind of pop network. So if we go back to our geometry node here, and if we go into our scatter, you can see that we have a force total count. And this is actually how many points that are being generated. So if we go back to the start, you can see we have all of these points that are emission points. And if I take it down to like say 100, you can see we only have 100 points, or approximately 100 points. And we get a totally different look. And this could also be really, really nice for making some bubbles maybe in a glass, some like soda, bubbles and we can take it up a bit further maybe like 500 so we still get this big clump of particles but they are a bit less let's go and make some geometry and we'll just do that by pressing tab and making a copy to point and for this to work we need some target points and we need some geometry. So let's first go and create a sphere. And let's put it into the geometry. And let's go and put our pop network into our points. And let's then connect this to our out. Okay, so you can see we have copied this sphere onto all of our points now. And the first thing I want to do is go to our sphere, go up to the primitive type, and we'll choose a polygon soup. And the reason why is because we have this frequency where we can turn up the subdivision of our sphere and we can also turn it down again. So for now, we'll just set it to one so it's really fast in the viewport. 
then I'll just go and turn down the uniform scale so they aren't that big. Let's set it to 0.2, and this is starting to look good. But we want some randomness. The way we do that is by pressing tab, and we'll search for attribute, randomize, and we can just put it in here to our points. So right now, as standard, it comes with a randomized color. And that could be nice if we were trying to colorize this one, but we're not trying to colorize it. So let's go up here to our attribute name and let's delete that. And let's go and type something else. So, so what we want to do here is that we want our scale of our points to be different. So the easiest way to do that is by using the attribute called P scale. And as you can see, it randomized our P scale. And the P scale just stands for point scale. So that's our scale of our points. That's easy, right? So what we can do now is go to our global scale here and we can turn it up and down. And that's acting like kind of like the same as this one in here. So let's just go and set this to one again. And if we go into our options, we can see we have a global seed. And this global seed is just our randomization seed. So let's just do it this for now. And let me go to my sphere. Let's pull it up in the frequency to like three. So we're actually getting round spheres here. That's a bit better. So now you can see we're almost starting to get these bubble kind of structures. And let's go back to the start and let's see what this looks like. So you can see that it's a bit slow. And Let's just stop this again. So we need to cache this because our simulation is getting too heavy. So the way I do that is just by going and creating a file cache. And I'll just put it in here. So we're caching all the nodes before the file cache. And let's go to our file cache. And we can see that we have our range here. And what I usually do is just make this standard. So it will just make a geo folder where you saved your project. I'll just go and press save to disk and it'll just run through all the frames. And depending on your computer, it'll be fast or it'll be slow. So I'll just see you when it's finished. All right, so that took about 30 seconds and that was not really bad for this type of simulation. So let's just preview it and see what we did. Okay, so that was how to make these pop networks in Houdini. And if you want more tutorials like this one, then please go and subscribe, like, and comment down below if you have any questions about this technique. And in the future, I'm gonna make more videos like this one, more Houdini tutorials. So if you are a bit afraid of jumping into Houdini, this is the right time for you to follow along because I'm gonna take you from a Houdini beginner to a Houdini master. So at last, I just wanna wish you a very nice rest of your day. Go out there, make some awesome 3D art, and I'll see you in the next tutorial for some more Houdini magic. Goodbye.